In this video, I'm going to show you how to absolutely command those changes in a 12 bar blues solo. I'm not talking about bashing a blues scale over the whole thing like everybody else does. I'm going to show you how to really command it and I'm going to show you how to do it without showing you loads of theory, without needing all of that, without needing to play scales for ages. And I'm going to base it on what you already know. Yes, you already know most of what you need to know to be able to do this. Want to know what it's going to sound like? How about this? So in this video, I'm going to show you just one, one shape that you can use to absolutely control it, just like I did there. What I'm betting is that you already know how to play an A7 chord there like that on the 5th fret. Because yes, we're going to be in the key of A. So, an A7 chord on the 5th fret, you've got to know that. If you don't, it looks like that. So there's that A7th chord. I'm sure you know if you put your little finger on there, you get an A chord as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the notes that are in those chords and we're going to use them as the basis of what we're doing. So while that A chord is being played, we're going to use notes from that A chord to draw our melody from. So the first thing we need to think about is let's break that chord down. And instead of playing all of the notes, we're going to play one note at a time. So there's six notes that are in the chord that you already know that are going to work over this. Put that A on there, and that's seven. There's another one. So we've got that one, that one, that one, and that one, that one, that one, and that one. So those are the notes in your chord. The first thing we're going to do, thing number one, we're going to extend that chord ever so slightly, and I'm going to give you a few more notes that I want you to think of as being part of the chord because these are chord notes they're just not in that shape there so first of all I'm going to think about the first string and we're going to add that note there on the ninth fret so you're, you've now got and the ninth fret there on the second string second string if I can say it we're going to add the eighth fret there so we're adding that note and that note to our chord already. This string we're going to leave alone for now. This string we've already got two notes on, so we're going to leave that alone for now. The fifth string we're going to add one note. It's there, it's the C sharp. There. Okay, so we've extended our chords by having that note there that we've already got. We've added that one in, we've already got that one, we've already got that one, already got that one, already got that, already got that, extended it by adding that, already got that, and added that. So we've added one, two, three notes to that chord. That's it. So with just that, we can actually play away around the 12 bar. So thinking of the first chord, you've got four bars of A, haven't you? So we're going to make a phrase that lasts for two bars and only uses those notes. Listen. Okay, there's a phrase. That's two bars. I played it twice there. So that gets me through the first four bars of our blues. Then, when the chord changes to the D chord, well, D chord is there, isn't it? And it's on the 10th fret. And it's the same shape chord. So it's the same shape chord and the same shapes for our extensions. There's the chord. There's our extension on the first string. On the second string. And on the fifth string. So in the D position we've got. So we take our same phrase. And we play that there. Now it's a two bar phrase, so we can fit it in once there. 
Now we fit it in once again when we get back down to the A chord because there's two bars of A. When we get to the end of our 12 bar, our turnaround, we've only got one bar on each chord. So you just play the first half of your phrase. And then you play it again on the next chord. You see what I did there? There's the E chord. Same shape, all the same notes. Same extensions. Moved up to the E, then down to the D. Then back to the A and finish it off, okay? So that's our first way of extending and thinking about that. Now, after this, we're gonna do some more notes. We've got all these notes here. I'm gonna show you some in-between notes, and these give you a little bit more color into what you're doing. So all we need to do for the first three strings, this is dead easy. Think of the seventh fret on the first three strings. So normally we have our extension note, chord note, we're going to put that note in between on the 7th fret. Next string, we've got our extension note there and our chord note. We're going to put that as our in-between note. On the next string down, the 3rd string, our in-between note. And I'm calling it in-between note because it's not in the chord. That's not the actual technical name, but that'll do. We're going to add that note there. So we've got 3 on that fret. You see the shapes? Next, we're gonna leave this string alone. I'm gonna, I've already got that note. I'm gonna add that one in there on the fifth string. That's our extension that we've already got. Then on the sixth string, I'm gonna add that one there and back to the root. You can, if you want, add that one as well. So now we've got chord note, in between note, extension, in between note, Chord note, chord note, chord note, chord note, in between note, chord note, in between, chord note, chord note, in between, and our extension up there. Okay? Dead easy. So start making phrases up that use those notes. There you go. Easy phrase. Use it further up the neck back down, exactly the same pattern. Just as a little passing thought, you can vary these and vary the ends to make them a little bit more interesting. Um, you don't need to, but you can, and it just adds that extra dimension. One idea when you're doing things like this is all you need to get through a whole 12 bar. You can put two ideas in, you can do more than that, but if you just do one, you've got enough structure there to actually make it sound like you really, really know what you're doing. Okay, now in this video we've covered one shape, in subsequent videos I'll cover more, but in the meantime, I've got a book, the links are below, it's got all sorts of blues things in it for you, have a look at that, and don't forget, if you've enjoyed the video, tell me how you've got on, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for more, because there's going to be more in this series doing just this, with different shapes all over the neck, so you get to know the whole neck in every chord. Okay, when you've got that, you'll have real, real command and you will play like a pro. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one.